Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and occasional beachgoer. I'm also a huge history nerd. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, and anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share some of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's dig into today's story. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today in 1997, Australian swimmer Susie Maroney embarked on her journey to become the first person recorded to swim from Cuba to Florida. Maroney swam a total distance of 177 kilometers, or around 110 miles, which is a lot of laps around the school pool. It took her 24 hours and 31 minutes to make it from Havana to Key West. To make that even more wild, it was the second time Maroney attempted the swim, and the first time she gave up with only 12 miles left to the United States. Now that is what we call persistence, but let's back up. Susie Maroney was born in New South Wales, Australia, on November 15th, 1974. She was born with asthma. She was also born with cerebral palsy, a chronic motor disability that affects a child's ability to move and keep their balance and posture. She and her family kept her condition a secret until 2007, since Maroney said she feared getting stigmatized. She started swimming at six months old as a form of treatment for her asthma as well as for her cerebral palsy. Maroney was an extremely strong swimmer. As a child, she swam in short races, and by the time she was seven years old, she started competing in swimming carnivals. At 13, Maroney started taking on long distances, and she decided to make swimming her career. In 1989, at only 14 years old, Maroney placed third in the Australian Marathon Swimming Championship for Women. The next year, she broke the speed record swimming across the English Channel, a 21-mile distance separating southern England from northern France. She started winning awards and national recognition for incredible stamina. In 1991, 1992, and 1993, she won the Manhattan Island Swim Race, a 28.5-mile race around the borough of Manhattan in New York City. Again, she was only a teenager. In 1996, Maroney decided to take on a big challenge, the Havana to Key West swim. The swim would take her across the Straits of Florida, a pretty treacherous deep water stretch of water full of sharks and jellyfish. Others had attempted to take on the swim before, but most failed. In 1978, a 64-year-old swimmer named Walter Ponish claimed to complete the swim, but he wasn't watched or supervised, and it's unclear if he actually made it across without help. But back to Maroney. She and her team carefully planned her swim, set for June 5th, 1996, intending to get into the Guinness Book of World Records. She was covered in Vaseline to deter jellyfish, they don't like Vaseline, and to keep her warm and protect her from the sun. She was also outfitted with a wire mesh cage to keep her safe from sharks and other sea creatures. And she expected to subsist off of bananas and sports drinks to keep her going until she hit the United States. The swim wasn't just an athletic showcase, though. Then Cuban leader Fidel Castro reportedly said he hoped the swim would improve relationships between his country and Maroney's native Australia. Unfortunately, Maroney's first attempt wasn't successful. She suffered a severe jellyfish sting and had to be taken out of the water not too far from her destination. This was disappointing, but Maroney didn't give up. At 22 years old, she returned to Havana on May 12, 1997 for another attempt. Outfitted in another mesh cage and once again covered in Vaseline, she jumped into the water in Havana at noon. She swam and swam and swam and swam, battling sharks, jellyfish, and 15-foot seas. To keep her brain moving as well as her body, Maroney replayed episodes of the TV show Seinfeld in her head as she swam. Just 24 hours and 31 minutes later, on May 13th, Maroney made landfall at Fort Zachary Taylor Beach, about six miles from Key West. It was a huge success. It was the best feeling in the world, she told reporters at the time. I was so glad to touch sand. So many times you think, I just don't want to keep going. 
Keep in mind that the swim is not for lay people. Moroni was super dehydrated when she reached the land, and she was covered in jellyfish stings. She had to be treated by a cardiologist to make sure the swim didn't leave her with lasting injuries. In fact, she was so beat up by the seas that she fainted after talking to reporters on the beach. Luckily, after treatment, Moroni ended up being okay. Moroni made a number of other impressive swims over the course of her career. She broke records swimming from Mexico to Cuba in 1998, a harrowing 122-mile swim. In 1999, she successfully swam from Jamaica to Cuba in the middle of a hurricane, but tragedy struck Moroni. Her brother died of a severe asthma attack in 2002, and a year later, Moroni decided to retire from swimming. In the years since, she's occasionally popped back up in popular culture, even competing in the Australian version of Survivor in 2019. But her swim from Cuba to Florida is still probably her most memorable achievement. And now let's talk about music. On this day in 2017, Harry Styles released his debut self-titled solo album. Styles came to prominence as a member of the British band One Direction. You've probably heard of them. They were huge, bringing back boy bands to the forefront of pop culture and propelling young singers like Niall Horan, Zayn Malik, and of course, Harry Styles to massive stardom. But by the mid-2010s, the members of One Direction were itching to break out on their own, and the band went on a still ongoing hiatus in August of 2015. Harry Styles' The Album debuted at number one on the US Billboard 200 and made all sorts of best of the year lists. Singles include Sign of the Times and Sweet Creature, and Styles performed a few tracks off the album on Saturday Night Live ahead of its release. His second solo album, Fine Lines, dropped in 2019 to much acclaim. So happy birthday, Harry Styles' The Album. And now for our final segment of today's show, I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a May 12th in my life. <laughs> okay, this one's kind of personally nerdy for me, I guess. But I took a screenshot on May 12th, 2020 of last year that Sarah Shower followed me on TikTok. If you don't know who Sarah Shower is, they are from Vine, um, but she still uploads and makes YouTube videos online. But they're actually genuinely like one of the funniest content creators I think I've followed for such a long time. I've been watching Sarah when I was on Vine, um, like 2014 to now, so around six years of content. Uh, she's hilarious. They're still hilarious, and I love their content. So if you follow anybody on TikTok, you should be following Sarah Shower. S.J. Shower. So shout out to Sarah. I was very excited to see that they followed me and completed the mutual. Um, I adore her. I think she's great. So definitely one of my favorite creators. <laughs> it's still crazy to me when people I've been watching for a long time end up finding me online and then look at my content and feel like I'm worthy of following. That is still one of the wildest things that I don't think I will ever get used to. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow. You can go ahead and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow at 365 Days MXM Tune on your preferred social media platforms. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.